Hello, welcome to my series about Chopin mazurkas. Today we have mazurka uh, in A flat major, opus 17, number 3. This mazurka is the most mysterious and the most difficult, in my opinion, to interpret in the whole opus. Um, it is. Uh, why it is so difficult? Well, of course, it's not really pianistically difficult, uh, but uh, it's it's musically difficult. It's very difficult to catch the the correct spirit of this piece, to find a good tempo um, and good spirit. Um, so this is always the um, the question which I ask myself when I uh, work on piece by preparing for uh, the recording or for the concert. Um, what is the character? What is the personality of the piece? What is this about? And everything. And here, these questions they are not so obvious. Like before, the two the two previous mazurkas were very obvious. This. <laughs> absolutely simple it has to be like that and there's no other way to play it if I for example think oh this is so sweet well it is it's not sweet and it doesn't really sound good because the spirit of this music is different and the same with the second one this one It's so obvious that it's just like that, we cannot play. No, no, right? So I think it's very clear. But here it's not so clear. Well, let's listen to a little bit before we start to talk about it. first part we can call it part A of the mazurka when we, we could hear two very different parts one much longer and one very short the beginning well if you ask me what dance it is my answer is this is not a dance and in fact if we listen to it and we don't know the title of the piece we would hesitate and we I don't think we would immediately think that oh this is mazurka well it can be many other things many other pieces so um, this is really more like a folk scene or more like the beginning of something that Chopin called himself that mazurkas are his own diary so it's something that he writes about his life and because his heart was Polish his thoughts always went to Poland and he was missing his country, his family and friends and everything there. Well, obviously it has to be based on folk Polish music. <clears throat> so here we have uh, the first mystery is this, well, left hand, left hand has no dancing rhythm whatsoever. Now we have Three times we have the chromatic sadness, right? And this is something which I, 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 I talked about before, that this chromatic scale going down, chromatic notes going down, this is a key to this uh, set opus of mazurkas. In every single mazurka we have it, and it's very, very important. So here the left hand is just producing the sad climate. Some, some kind of we are thinking, where are we, where are we, what is, 
what is going on, but we are not, we don't feel calm. And here we have the melody, which is very strange, this melody. Listen to this melody. It's three times the same phrase. And then again the same. This is. This seems like Chopin has no creativity. He is like, oh my god, what to write? I don't know what to write. Oh, he cannot compose. I'm just lost, completely lost. But the way he ends the phrase is is absolutely magic. This the second time we listen. It goes up, and then two times is repeating. He is repeating the same motif. Picture something when you when you hear this because I can I can picture a bird. Uh, you know when when I practice here in in, in this studio, very often uh, there are birds who are now uh, now we don't hear birds because it's raining, but uh, when it's not raining, the birds are coming and they are singing together with me. And one one day I was practicing this mazurka, and I heard the bird, and I was like, wow. He's singing the same thing. It's the same really thing. Repeating uh, the, the end of the phrase two or three times. So I said, well, maybe this is a kind of imitation of the bird. And since that moment, for me, this, this phrase is like a bird. Um, um, and now... find a good tempo of course it cannot be too slow because the mazurka itself is very long it, it it gets it has a lot of repetitions so we cannot play too slow because then it, it, it stays it doesn't go it has doesn't have a flow with the music should have a flow so I think the fast the faster the better so strange that it's it does sound strange it sounds strange because we don't have the feeling of the basic of the feeling of the to tonality of the basic of the beginning of something which we have the a flat major this is very important here we don't have this is already a tension Here, we have here, but it is very short time and we don't really feel it. Because it immediately goes up. Again, like a question, you know? This note is also not at, uh, the, the main note, so... Again, not. And again, not. So all the time we are not at home. We are not at home. I think this is the, the key to understand this moment. And then later, well, Chopin is trying to dance, but it has no power. Maybe only for four bars, listen. And what happens? Coming to the reality. So this Oberek has this kind of hoopce, which I always talk about, this kicking legs together, here, 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 uh, all the time, boom. Uh, it, uh, it is a very uh, folk, Polish, um, folk Polish dance. But then, after the second time, we, uh, Chopin is changing the world, is changing the mood from this sad and cold to warm and happy and here we, here is where the true mazurka starts just listen to this first listen to the magic uh, transition
and so on. So here we are in Poland. We absolutely, this is very, and this is not difficult really to interpret. It's a little bit difficult rhythmically because we need to use the Polish folk rhythm. Uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So this is important. Uh, not all the time, of course, but, uh, but that's very important. But first the transition. Well, the transition is magic because on the same one note, which is the ending note of the uh, the previous world, Chopin is changing just the one note in accompaniment and is bringing us to the next level, I would say, to a different world. <laughs> then from A flat major we go to E major. So we have, first we have four flats and then we have four sharps. It is really, really big difference. And then we have this melody, which is very simple. Listen. Second time, again the same. Okay, third time, again the same. But then, well, we don't continue the same way because it will be too boring, so Chopin is changing. Then the same thing. So here I think it works very well if we do a kind of accelerando, a kind of faster, 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 uh, which is also a common practice in folk, uh, folk uh, groups and folk dances. So we start slow and then we go faster. something incredible. <clears throat> Chopin imagines the group of folk players and suddenly here is like in a jazz band. There is one who has a solo. Viol folk violinist goes in front of the group and plays a solo and he sh he's showing off his technique. Listen. <laughs> We should clap now. Oh, we should clap it. But the, the, it's very funny because uh, the, he plays all the scale. So he shows, oh, I practiced scales and I can play the scale. And and the group of, of his friends, they are playing. But are they playing on two, on three, on four? We don't know. You can try to count. Try to count. to count. It's all the same. It's flat. We don't have one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. There is nothing like that here. Um, in the next mazurka we also have something like that, but in a very different character. Well, so here they just play and they let him to show off. Listen this. he comes back and they play again for dancing. Oh, I love this so much. So it's such a it's such a nice funny funny melody and very folk, very Polish, very traditional. Amazing, amazing, amazing. And especially when we think about it that Chopin wrote it probably uh, I mean, for sure in Paris. So now I will play for you uh, s uh, some longer part of this mazurka, since I love it very much.
we are coming back to the beginning of the piece and then how it ends. So uh, I hope you liked it. I hope you liked this positive energy which this this mazurka, especially in the second part, brings to our hearts. And I I invite you to my next videos about mazurkas. Well, there will be all of them. So a lot. Take care. Thank you.